All right, so take a look at this. This is my bamboo ball python hatchling, my very first hatchling from 2019. Take a look at that beauty. And I was really lucky that this guy came out of the egg because I had my incubator malfunction and the temperature got really cold in the egg boxes. It went down probably in the 60s. And basically what happened was is I had the heat panels on the side and I didn't have the air to circulate. And in my basement, it is really cold and those egg boxes got really cold. As a matter of fact, this is, this is hatching out now. Uh, and I think this is day 72. I've never seen ball pythons hatch out so late and there's still most of them are in the eggs. There's one more that actually came out of the egg and it's one of the normal 50% het caramel albino. This is 50% het caramel albino as well. And I kind of wanted to show you my update on the incubator, how I changed some things. And I actually posted my incubator disaster uh, as a video on YouTube here. And I had a lot of comments on how to, you know, change things up and some suggestions. And I kind of want to show you where I am as far as taking some of those suggestions into considerations and some of the new stuff that I added to that incubator. So let's go check out my incubator upgrade. All right, so this is my six foot tall snake egg incubator. And essentially what I did is I converted a beverage cooler over to an incubator. I disconnected all the compressor and the electronics except for the lights. And then I ran a heat tape down each side on the inside over here, all the way up in here. And then I have some heat tape along the back. And then all the heat tape is plugged into a thermostat. It is a VE100 Vivarium electric electronics thermostat. And the thing that failed on this incubator was this fan down here. And you know, some people said, you know, they, they don't have a fan or the fan isn't really an issue. In this case, it is an issue because of how cold the basement is down here. It is, you know, in the low 60s and there's not a whole lot of insulation between here and the inside of the incubator. So essentially what happens is the heat strips are at 90 degrees and the air inside is somewhere between 90 and 60 and that was the problem. Problem. You know, I could actually feel there was a huge difference when I pulled out these these boxes of eggs, and I didn't realize it until I replaced my fan that all of a sudden the the egg boxes were like 20 degrees warmer. So it was a huge difference just not having that fan in there. So what I did is I replaced the fan, and in addition to that, I also put in these little probes. I have actually two probes in here. Let me show you what these probes look like. These are just little temperature probes, and those, there's actually two of them, one on the top shelf and one on the bottom shelf right between the boxes right there. And those probes are wirelessly <laughs> connected to this right here. So I've kind of had the door open a little bit. So you see the temperature's off a little, but you can see there's uh, a probe one is at 86.9, probe two is at 90. And this is the inside temperature down at the bottom. This is actually 69 degrees right now. It was the low this morning, it was really cold in here. It was 63 degrees. And then when the furnace kicks on, it goes up to 73. But you see there's some, you know, difference between the high and the low, and this really tracks everything. In addition to tracking everything, this also has alarms. So you can set the high alarm and the low alarm. And let me tell you, this is this is this is just magnetic. It is really nice. I use some lithium batteries for this, so it'll definitely won't run out of battery power for the whole season I use lithium batteries I think it was I think it was double a batteries for those and then triple a batteries for the the control center and and that's really what you need in here to keep track of the temperatures and you know hopefully I won't lose too many snakes based on you know how cold these were and how late these are hatching some of the ones in the bottom were the ones that were you know the earliest clutch it was a it was a two box clutch so far I've seen two eggs come out in about 72 days. I'm hoping to get maybe a couple more out of there. And, and if those are coming out, I'm thinking I have a good chance of these boxes here actually hatching. And what I'll probably do is, is 
since since it got really cold this is probably extended way out past the 60 day hatch time so it'll probably extend even longer so I probably won't cut these at all and if if they hatch they hatch and if they don't you know at maybe 90 days I'll cut them open and check out inside of them but I'm hoping you know some or most of my eggs will actually hatch you know at this point it was probably a month and a half that that fan was out and I didn't know it so it was a long extended time that these eggs got really chilled probably down in the mid 60s I would guess all right also if you notice my incubator if you look at some of my older videos my incubator is at a different angle than it used to be so the glass door now is facing this way and it used to be where the glass door was actually on this side of the incubator and what was happening was the sun was coming in from the window and it was shining on the bottom two levels uh, of the incubator and especially when the sun was setting in the afternoon and what that was doing it was heating up those boxes on on the bottom making them hotter and they were hatching earlier than the other ones and I definitely noticed there was a difference in the the, the time to hatch on those they were definitely getting hotter I didn't really see how much hotter they were getting but I did notice I was struggling with the Sun last year so what I did is I just simply turn the whole thing and that seems like it solves the problem the Sun hits the side but it doesn't really get that hot it reflects it and if the side heats up remember that the, the probe is on that side so if it heats up a little bit the, it'll actually turn down the heat strip on this side and adjust for that temperature from the Sun hitting the incubator all right one more thing I wanted to cover and that is the probe placement of this VE 100 and essentially where I have it right now I have it right on it's taped to the heat tape on the side of the incubator on the inside and there's a lot of people that said that actually should be on the inside right in the middle and some people said you know even put it inside one of the boxes the problem I found with that is that um, I actually put the probe right in the middle and plugged this thing in and turned it on. These these strips actually went to 120 degrees and the side of the boxes were going, you know, mid to upper 90s, which is way too hot. And, you know, it was really cooking trying to get that probe uh, to, to 90 degrees. So uh, essentially there's a couple more comments that said you can actually turn the maximum power down on your thermostat instead of going to 100% power you can dial it back to like 10% or 20% unfortunately the VE100 doesn't have that function so I can't turn it down what I actually have to do is I'd have to upgrade to like a herp stat where you can actually dial the output power of the thermostat so where it's you know instead of getting really really hot it would only get you know I haven't actually tested this but I'd like to try to you know put a herp stat on here and test it maybe in the off season to see what the temperature max would be of the strips on the side and the sides of the box you know in order to get the those temperatures warm enough to get the middle probe up to 90 degrees so that's kind of you know playing around with the temperatures and stuff I don't really want to do that yeah at this point I really want to keep these you know in the, in the upper 80s to you know probably 90 91 maximum I think I have my alarm set at 92 don't really want to go above 92 and the low alarm I'm setting at 85 so if anything happens you know I'll, I'll really be you know keeping an eye on it the other thing is is down here I actually had to set this thermostat to 93 so you see that the, the heat strip is actually 93 the probe is going back and forth between 92 and 93 and the interesting thing is nothing here is at 93 so this is actually 90 and 86 as far as the temperatures of those probes between the boxes so really what you need is you need the heat strips on the side a little bit warmer than what you're actually measuring in between the boxes and I'm thinking a lot of it has to do with the temperature of this room so if the temperature of this room you know warms up if it you know in the middle of the summer if all of a sudden it's 80 degrees in this room I can almost guarantee I'm gonna have to go in and turn those temperatures down on that thermostat in order to maintain the 90, 88 to 90 degree temps that I want 
on these egg boxes. All right, so take a look at this. This is my second ball python hatchling of the year. This is a normal, came out of that first box of eggs. And look at how small it is, really tiny, tiny, tiny ball python. I was actually lucky to get these out of that first clutch because it's a couple weeks past the hatch date. They got really cold in the incubator and I, I honestly, I wasn't sure any of them would come out because I was looking in those eggs and I actually cut them open and thinking they were ready to come out and since it got cold I was actually cutting two weeks early which means they were definitely not ready to come out of the egg and, and when I looked in them the first time I looked in those eggs there was like a bunch of mold and fungus and it smelled really bad and I wasn't sure any of these snakes would actually come out and I was lucky to get two of them so far hopefully I'll get another at least one or two snakes out of this first clutch and let me tell you lesson learned from that incubator I'm thinking about maybe doing a little more high-tech incubator next year kind of building something a little bit more custom a little bit more high-tech maybe with a little bit more insulation more steady temperature controls and maybe some really tight alarms on that incubator so stay tuned for a new incubator build sometime in the future so thanks for watching thought I'd give you an update on the incubator and my hatchlings I got a couple hatchlings so I'm pretty excited that I actually Actually got something so far and I got a handle on my incubator with some alarms and some controls and things are looking good hopefully I'll have a pretty good year this year and it looks like I might so thanks for watching thanks for coming along and I will see you next time